What's going on guys? So today we're going to work on the Lowrider ST. As you guys probably remember, I had changed out this original 117 scoop for the Vance and Hines uh, America edition for uh, the V02. I had some issues with it. Uh, Vance and Hines did a great job in trying to resolve it. They sent a couple different parts out. They sent a new filter out. They sent that, but it, it didn't make a difference. What I had happening and I'll post a picture up here, right up here, where you can see that, where I was having oil drip out of the filter down onto my case, and then it was blowing back on my pipes and my leg, and it was just a mess. I don't know why it was doing it on that one and it wasn't doing it on my Heritage or on my, lower, or my Rogue Glide ST, um, <clears throat> but it was kind of odd, so I tried for a couple weeks going back and forth, like I said, with Vance and Hines. They did a great job trying to do it. They were very helpful, very responsive. I just didn't want to keep messing with it. So I decided to go with a different brand of an air cleaner. And this is the SNS. And so this one's pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a different design. Uh, you can see it's got this here, and then it's got a little interfering part there. But on the inside, of the air cleaner. Let's see if we can get a good shot. It's got these channels right here where the oil comes through the bleeder bolts and it just kind of sticks that in there and does a, a mellow little drip and whatnot. And so the, the way that the Vance and Hines worked is the bleeder bolts had hoses that came out and went over on the tip and went directly into the air cleaner. And I think that maybe because the engine was breathing and sucking, that it was sucking that oil out and putting too much inside. But again, like I said, odd enough, it doesn't do it on the Heritage with the same air cleaner and it didn't do it, doesn't do it on the Rogue Light ST. So I don't know, but don't wanna mess with it anymore. So we're gonna switch this out and put the new one on and then take it on a long ride and uh, I'll keep you guys posted as to what happens, do a little follow-up maybe on my Instagram or something like that, just to let you know. But <clears throat> some of the things about it comes, I've got all my stuff all laid out here, like you can see like I do, because I'm weird that way. But it <clears throat> comes with some new breeder bolts. There are uh, holes there in the center, and then some different screws to mount in there. It's got a little kick plate that goes on the back of the mount right here, where it sticks that in there and, and puts that on. So that'll sit like this and block off some of the parts down here that you see, which is kind of cool that they thought about that. And then also on here, there's a little O-ring that goes around the Venturi hole right there. And I just stuck a little bit of grease on there just to hold it in place so it doesn't fall out when I'm trying to work on it and put it in place just to make sure it sticks in those grooves. So I just stuck those on there, that little oil on there to help hold it, or grease, I'm sorry. And then this piece just goes over and sticks on, and that's about the end of it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull off the original one here. I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail because you guys have seen me do it on two, three other bikes now. So I'm just gonna work through, ripping through it, fast forward through that. And then we'll get into the last couple points of the prep before we put this new one on. So, cool. All right, let's get started. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little pre-assembly on this. Right now I have the air filter just sitting on there, but it's holding, which is good. And then we're gonna put this little piece on here. And the way this goes is it's got two holes, a little um, in, uh, a hole right there, and then it's got like a little nipple right there. And you put that on, and then it comes with a self-tapping screw. That's a Phillips head. And you just put that guy right in there and then screw it down with a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna set it down so I get some leverage on it.
Okay, so that looks like that. And what that does is when this is sitting here, this covers up that cable connector, which is kind of cool they thought of that. All right. Now I'm gonna take my cool filter off and we're gonna start these bolts. So this goes on like that. These bolts, make sure you have your Loctite on them. Go in here and start to thread in. And then once you get them in, they're just like the other one, they don't come out. So just like that. So now because we have the grease holding the O-ring in place, we've got these started. We've got our little cover mounted and we've got the breather bolts. They also come with a bunch of these little washers. Now from what I've seen, you only need one, but the option is there. It comes with eight, four on each side. So you can add some thickness to it if you need to between this and the new back plate. So we're gonna start with one and then we'll test it and I'll show you kind of a good way to test it with that. But for now, we're gonna put a breather bolt in and a washer flat side down, round side to the bolt, like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we get them in there like that. And then we're gonna take a 5 16 hex bit and get the breather bolt started. And again, make sure you have Loctite on them. And then we'll get the other bolt started. Okay, so that holds it in place. And then we'll start these ones here. And just like the other one, these are 5 30 seconds hex. Gonna run them down so I can get a flush mount and test the spacing on the washer for the breather bolts. Okay, those are just hand tight. And we'll take this and run this down. Just gonna snug those. Now I'm gonna take a washer and feel back here between this mount to see if I have any gap, and that'll tell me if I need to have another washer. That side's good. And that side seems good. You can use a feeler gauge, but we're just gonna use the washer. And everybody else said they only used one. All right, so now we got those on there. Now we'll go ahead and tighten down the breather bolts and then the center bolts as well. Okay, now those are on there with some Loctite. Good to go. See the channels coming in there. So now what we'll do is we'll put the filter on there. Comes with a little chrome thing on the bottom here. I'm just gonna put that down towards the bottom just so it hides it. So that sits there and then this piece comes with these black screws that are Phillips head and we'll put those in there to go through because it's going to have to go through this and through the cover to kind of hold it all in there. Okay, so I figured for this part I'd zoom in a little bit closer so you can get a better look to see what it is. But if I pull this off real quick, here's the channels that I was talking about right there. As you can see, it's a little bit different than the tubes that come in from the Vance and Heinz. So to put this on, again, you've got the little silver piece on the bottom here. We're gonna just put that in there, aim it towards the bottom, and kind of press this in place. So it kind of holds, hopefully, itself in place where we get ready. And then for this piece, You've got S and S cycle, goes in, goes inward like that. And it's kind of a sandwich deal because you've got the cover, the insert, and then you gotta get those screws. 
So we're gonna try to sandwich this guy in and get it lined up, kind of like that, All right? Just to get it kind of positioned and then see how well this is gonna work. Actually, let's try this. There's a little lip right here that catches on the edge of this lip inside. So I'm gonna see if we can get that to hold itself in place. Just long enough to get that cover started without dropping the whole thing. And then we'll take our cover, and quickly slide that over, get it lined up. You see the screw holes. And then we take our Phillips head screws to come in the kit and we'll start tightening those in there just to get them finger started to hold everything together. And then just check your seal all the way around to make sure you don't have anything pushing out past that lip so that it maybe breaks that seal on the inside so oil can potentially come out, right? Because there's a little raised lip in there. So I'm just gonna run my finger all the way around. Seems like I got it pretty good. And then push down on that and start tightening these the rest of the way down. Torque value, if you're interested on these, are 72 inch pounds. I'm gonna calibrate my elbow. And there you go, nice and snug. Check our seal around again. Make sure everything feels good. Then we'll take our cleaner, clean all the fingerprints off of it. And there you go. There's your new SNS Cycles Air Stinger Ear Cleaner. So now what I think we'll do is we'll take this thing out for a ride. I got some errands to run, so might as well take this, get it out there. Take it out there, run around a little bit, put some spirited aggression on it, and see if we see any leakage coming out of the bottom, similar to what we saw on the other one. So, cool, back in a minute. It's a nice afternoon for a ride. So we're back from our ride, a little spirited run. Things are a little warm right here, so we'll probably touch a little lightly, but now what I wanna do is check and see if we have any leaks. Now, I did some romping on it. I tried to rev it up real good, get up to high speeds, went on the freeway a little bit, start, stop, all that kind of stuff. So I wanna to try to impose a little pressure on it, see what it does. And if I reach down here around this seal, which is where my problem was before, I've got no oil on there, looks nice. So let's take off this cover and we will take a look and see if we've got any leakage or anything in there for that. All right, there's a little 
wetness in there, which is expected. Nothing's dropping down in here. Looks pretty good. So I'd say all in all, um, pretty good test run. Uh, we'll, we'll know more later as we ride it. And I take it on a little bit longer run, get some more heat into it and things like that. But for the most part, pretty happy with it. So let me get this thing put back together and then we'll drop back and show you what it kind of looks like from a distance on the bike. So back in a second. All right, so we got spun back around now. Span it back out. You can see I got everything all put back together, all cleaned up, looking pretty. So overall, pretty simple install, just like any of the other ones. Uh, just takes a little time to get through it, get a position, a little prep work with this cool cover. Here you have your SNS Cycles Stealth Air Stinger Air Cleaner. Um, so far, pretty happy with it. Like I said, just did a quick, short little test ride on it. We'll figure out more as we go through and ride a little longer. I'll put some posts on my Instagram or something like that as to what I find out and if it continues to leak out and drip that oil out the bottom. But so far, big difference from the other one. So not quite sure what it was before. Maybe it's those channels, but um, pretty happy all in all. I hope you find this video useful. Uh, I hope it was informational and kind of showed you a cool product. Uh, like, subscribe, give me feedback, questions, comments. You know I like them all. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Be good humans. Take care.